Grown men cry at this film. This film has shocked the world. Joining me now is the director and producer of India's Daughter. Thank you so much for being with us, Leslie Udwin. Thank you, Zane. What is it about this film that has mesmerized, that has shocked people around the world? I think it's an unusual documentary in that uh, its sensibilities belong more to films, films that take a viewer on a journey of empathy which is what film does so well. It asks the viewer to sublimate their own personal concerns, worries, selfish thoughts, and give themselves over to this point of view of the other, which is actually the most generous political act a human being can make. If we saw the world through the other's point of view, if men in power saw the world through our eyes and felt our pain in this war that is being waged against women the world over, things will change. So film is um, a, a transformative medium. And I think the thing about this film, um, this documentary film, is that the, the sensibilities are those of story and feature film more than documentary. There are no dry, hard experts discussing that. It's not like a pamphlet on the issue. It is a visceral journey. It grips you emotionally. It hits you in the solar plexus. And it shocks you because it has a rare access to the rapists in this case while they are waiting to be hanged in prison. And that was, you know, quite an unusual um, uh, unprecedented perspective, perspective, unprecedented actually. perspective to but take. If, if I'm a viewer watching this, or I'm, I'm listening to you talk about this, what is it that's, that knocks me between the eyes here that gives me that visceral sense of, oh my God, I, I, I'm now richer for having watched this film now than had I not? A number of things. The pain and dignity and forbearance of the parents who have lost this <laughs> glowing daughter, this extraordinary young woman, who they fought so hard to educate. The father had to sell a piece of his ancestral land to pay for her admission to university. Um, the loss of that hits you in the solar plexus. Uh, hearing the rapist be so utterly without any remorse, there is not one second of remorse. And why is there no remorse? You come to realize very soon in the film, it's because he doesn't think he's done anything wrong. He thinks she did something wrong for being out at night on the streets. That makes her a slut. It makes her fair game. So that in itself is extremely shocking and more shocking than what the rapist has to say, where you know he blames the girl, he says a girl's more responsible for rape than a boy, a decent girl wouldn't roam around the streets at nine o'clock at night. She was going to see Life of Pi, for heaven's sake, a film with a male friend. She wasn't even venturing out alone. But, but more shocking, Zane, is what the lawyers, what the defense lawyers say in this film, because these are so-called educated men. One of them says that if his daughter had behaved the way this... She deserved it. <laughs> yeah, and, and if his daughter had behaved that way, he would take her to his farmhouse, he would pour petrol over her, and he would set her alight. What? Yes, watch the documentary. You see, this, so this is the thing. This is what the documentary has actually um, answered the question, why do men rape? but in a very startling way, in a very surprising way, because the insight that I got and that's obviously now right. reflected in the perspective of the documentary is men rape because they can. Men rape because society teaches them from the first day they come into this world that they are superior, that girls are of lesser value. It equips them, programs them with a set of attitudes to women. Of course, if I think someone is of lesser value than me, I'll do what I want with her, thinks the rapist. And, and, and as you're looking at the interviews, you're, do, you're doing the interviews, you're shocked at what's being said, um, as, as a, the director, how do you kind of take those on or, or kind of decide what, what's in, what's out, or what more do we need for perspective? I mean, how, how much uh, process um, were you engaged with in, in, in a, such a sensitive, volatile, politically and, so, and global issue? Um, was there like a moments where you struggled with, is this in or out, or is this fair, or was, was there any moments like that? Well, yes, the whole process of editing was that tapestry of how important is this, 
uh, you're, you're making, just on the basic level, you're making a selection that is an almost impossible to make because you have been on a journey that has yielded, in my case, 87 hours of interviews. But I have to end up with a documentary that is one hour long. So already I'm bound to leave out crucially important things. Um, and in a documentary, you can only make your film after you've shot it. Mm -hmm. Because you have mm -hmm. no idea mm -hmm. what you're going to get. I was literally going knocking on doors, hoping people would talk to me. Sometimes people didn't talk to me. I've had to leave out. One of the most fundamental witnesses in this case, the friend who was with her on the night, I had to leave him out. He would not interview. So, mm -hmm. you know, uh, the choices you make are in the cutting room. And all I guess I tried to do was to continually be true to my feeling and my uh, insights as I reviewed the material and remembered the journey because, you know, you, your instincts actually do, are a very good sifter yeah. between the fruit and the chaff. Um, there's one character who I had in for just one beat because she came up with the most extraordinary metaphor and people still comment what on that. What was it? It was that when you give a, a boy a full glass of milk and his sister half a glass, you are teaching that boy that the girl is of no value. You are teaching that boy right. to do what he wants with that girl. Uh, so, you know, you, you choose depending on what reflects the insight that you've gleaned. What do you think is the one question that a young woman must ask herself? How do I, in a world in which a war is actually being waged against my voice, how do I use my voice? How do I insist on my voice? Because gender inequality is a human rights violation. It, it's as strong as that. And every girl needs to fight for her space until and unless the world actually looks at this question with some measure of commitment and seriousness because we are the bottom of the heap. I mean, 19th century, we looked at solving slavery. That was the great moral dilemma for us. 20th century, totalitarianism, anything and everything except women. Right. Now, if we don't deal with this this century. So with, with that in mind, um, what what has been the best advice you have ever received? Do you know, I think the best advice I've ever received came from my own gut. I don't think anyone has given me the kind of advice that I would want young girls to hear. My father tried to stop me doing what I was doing. He patriarchally tried to control me. My mother felt the oppression of my father's edict that I was to be a lawyer or nothing else, but certainly nothing to do with this world of, you know, wasting your time <laughs> making films, <laughs> acting, all that stuff. So my mother had to collude in that because, of course, we teach our boys how to think. We also teach our girls how to comply with what the boys think. Nobody really gave me that advice, but in my gut, I just thought, I deserve to do what I want with my life. I'm autonomous. I have every right. So I just do it. I go. It's, it's exactly how I got access to the rapists in this film. Everybody is, you know, amazed, particularly in India, and say, well, how did you get that access? I asked. <laughs> <laughs> it's as simple as that. I dared to ask because I was impassioned and compelled to know what goes on in their minds because if we don't understand these rapists how are we going to change them so the compulsion to do that made me dare to ask that's fantastic and i was granted permission leslie Edwin, thank you so much you're super fabulous <laughs> thank <laughs> you Zane. really keep up the amazing and passionate and important work and this thank forum you. my god this forum is so yeah. amazing and the energy in this room here at the women's uh, women in the world summit is Fantastic. It's awesome. The energy in this room alone could achieve what we need for women in the world. Wonderful. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you.